Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are having a good day. And um, we're just about to um, show you how to change your chain, your rear sprocket and your front sprocket. All right, so the first thing you need to do is get your rear wheel out really. So um, we'll do that. So this is an MT125 uh, uh, 2019. Um, yeah, desperately, desperately needs a new sprocket and um, chain. So, on this side, use a 17mm, and on the other side, use a 19 By the way, I'm using um, R, um, RNG um, spool mounts. Um, I've got the bike on them and then ratchet strap down as well. So these aren't gonna move around anywhere because uh, once I take the axle out, these can potentially move. So hopefully that'll be uh, prevented by this uh, ratchet strap, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna wind in these spindles all the way on both sides. So I believe it's an 11 mil. Oh, it's a 10 mil, I believe. Then it's been a while. So 10 mil on there and a 12 mil on there. So just loosen them up on both sides. Uh, so this loosen this all the way to the end, and then run all run this all the way in again um, on both sides. Cool. Cool, once that's done, uh, you can now um, make sure the bike is in neutral and find the link in the chain. So the link is just here. I mean, there are tricks about you being able to pull the new chain through um, and that's a lot easier. I am quite tempted to do that, but I might as well, I'm gonna take all this off and clean it and clean underneath where the chain has been sitting. So I'm just going to take it apart now. So if you need like um, a pair of needle nose pliers, basically. Something a bit like this. And basically put the pliers on the, um, on the pin and then just resting on the actual clip. You should be able to get that to come out like that. And then you can just pull it off, and that's the that's the um, that's this kind of safety pin that holds everything together. Um, and then you can take the faceplate off. Maybe grab yourself a flathead screwdriver might make it a bit easier. go there we go so that's like the face plate that holds the, the actual link posts together and that's your like circlet basically sort of thing cool so now you can tick chain off
by the way, if you don't want to get really dirty hands, just buy yourself some uh, mechanic gloves or just some latex gloves. But um, yeah, you can make the bike go backwards now. Take the chain off. I'd suggest going backwards because um, you don't want to get it tangled up on the front sprocket. So yeah, that's your chain. Um, and sometimes you can get it to do that, just stack up. So that can go over there. And now we're gonna take the rear wheel out. So. Sometimes the axle needs a bit of persuasion to get out. So I'd use the end of a, a mallet. So that's the wheel out now, um, and if the uh, spacers do come out, and they probably will, just put them on the axle. I probably uh, would like to clean up this axle as well, um, it is a bit grubby, so I'll probably clean it up, uh, get your nut, put it on the end, or if you have just a big tray, like a big plastic tray. You can just lay everything in that and then you'll know that you won't lose anything. But yeah, that's the wheel out. Um, let's go onto the front sprocket. Cool guys. So um, now we just need to take this um, sprocket cover off, I guess. Um, so... It's a 10mm socket. So just grab yourself a 10mm socket, I believe it is anyway. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, this is exactly why I have this set here. Cool. So I just like having a set like this just so I can leave underneath the bent like the work where I'm working. Probably an 8 then. Yeah, it's an 8 now. So grab yourself an 8 mil, uh, and then I just used to, I just like to use a little little um, extension for my 8 mil. Don't know why, just makes his life easier. So um, get those cracked loose. And then you should be able to just undo them by hand. Bit of corrosion on those bad boys. Better clean those up. Cool, so once those are out, put them aside. Grab this, and there you go. That's actually surprisingly clean. I thought that would be full of gunk, but you probably find guys that you're that it's probably full of loads and loads of crap in there. Um, so yeah, I just like to put the bolts here and here just to leave them like that and set it aside and then time to get this sprocket off so what you want to do is put it in first gear so it can't move around and then you should be able to break these bolts yes there you go there's one there's two so undo these bolts That's one. And that's two. Just put those aside. Now, just get this plate, rotate it. It's got splines on it. And then just pop it off. And then that's the plate off. And then you can grab the sprocket.
and then pull that off too <laughs> without dropping it. Um, yeah, so you can see on these on these um, teeth, they're getting quite quite shallow, and that means the chain is quite loose, and they're getting a little bit spiky. Not too bad. I mean, the chain was really really loose, um, and I was running out of um, any more adjustment on the on the rear bolts to be able to push the rear uh, wheel back. So yeah, time to get a new sprocket and chain. So yeah, once that's off, now you can um, get the rear wheel. So once you get the rear wheel, um, just put it on the ground, just do it like this and get the right socket that you need. So, uh, for these, it's a 12 mil. Um, yeah, so I just put it like this. Sometimes you might need to sit on it, but normally you can do this like crab position where you're grabbing the tire and squeeze with your legs and have it on the floor. You should be able to loosen them up. So now I'm just going to grab my impact driver because it's quicker. So I believe in this set I have the right size. So this is a 12. And I've just got a little adapter. So 12 mil. And then just whack these off. You probably find that the socket kind of gets stuck on them. start out that's not good all right well so it took the stud out on this um so i'll have to um fix that off camera um i'll have to put the stud back in uh, and get this nut off or what what you can do as well you can put two nuts on here tighten them against each other and then you should be able to get this out and then you can put the stud back in that's no issue lights it's fine. Um, when you put the stub back in, uh, use like red tight thread locker or, or blue, doesn't really matter. Like as long as it doesn't come undone, like happy days. Um, and then with a rubber mallet, just give it a bit of a tap. It should come off with a bit of persuasion, there you go. That's the sprocket off. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty toast really. Um, it's pretty spiky, uh, especially here. Look how spiky those are. Um, so yeah, definitely needs to be done. Uh, and yeah, that's the sprocket off. So now you've got to this point. Um, yeah, put all the new parts on uh, and I'll show you how to do that once I've cleaned up all this um, all this mess in here and stuff and underneath here and because i've got the rear wheel out i can give the caliper a scrub and all in here give it a nice scrub and all around here and the axle clean up the axle make that all nice and shiny again um clean up this mess and clean your work environment so like put all these old parts um away 
uh, just on the floor or somewhere. And then um, I need to go and fix this uh, stud that I've pulled out of the wheel. Um, so yeah, I'll be back in a minute. So there we go, guys. Um, the stud is now back in the wheel and it is now a wheel stud. Um, so same thing to put it back in, um, get two um, nuts, put one there, one there, tighten them against each other, and then you'll be able to insert the um, the wheel stud back in, the wheel, uh, sorry, the sprocket wheel stud back in, and then you'll be able to put your new sprocket on and, and, and tighten it to um, spec. Um, so yeah, so, um, so I've tidied and cleaned up all the parts now. Um, and now is the time to um, put it all back together. So I've cleaned up all the bolts, I've fixed the stud, tidied up all the parts and everything. Um, and yeah, so basically what I always suggest is just getting genuine Yamaha parts or genuine whatever parts, because um, Unless you like finding better quality parts, then yeah, do that because um, it's a lot. They're, they're obviously a lot better because you've got certain chain companies that only make chains, certain companies that only make make the actual sprockets. But I just I just buy uh, genuine Yamaha parts. So so here is a genuine Yamaha sprocket. That's a brand new sprocket there. Genuine, um, and there's the part number by the way if you wanted it. Um, genuine front sprocket. Um, one thing you sh should do as well if you do order different parts is uh, make sure they're the same size as your old parts. Because um, that's the last thing you want to do is change your gear ratio uh, so you go faster. Uh, because that will be bad because um, that means you'll be speeding. Um, cool. So, don't know if this box has got a part number at all on it. Oh, there it is. See if you can see that guy. There you go. So, that's the box. Um, and here's. Uh, let's see if I can show you where I got it from without showing my details. So these are the guys that I got it from. They're on eBay. Um, yeah, really good. Um, got the sprocket set for 130 something quid. So yeah, very, very happy with that. And this is the chain. So. lay everything out lay everything out take them all out of the bags and stuff so there is my new little sprocket so that's there all right I suppose let's put the front sprocket on so front sprocket Get the front sprocket, slide it on there like that. Get your retaining plate, uh, slide that over, give it a spin, and then get your retaining bolts. I've put a little bit of blue Loctite on them just because I don't want the sprocket going anywhere. I know. It's just something that I've always done. It's like put thread locker on stuff. You don't want to go crazy with thread locker because the worst thing you want to do is um, get it so next time you do the job, it becomes really easy because you've put red thread locker on the bolts. So now that's there. Tighten it up to spec. Um, so look up the spec. Um, I'm just going to do it up how I want to do it up. Right. 
Um, cool. So now let's put the front sprocket on. So grab your front sprocket. And I always like to put it on so you see the um, how big it is and everything. So just slide it on. Cool, so that's on. And then I've already put um, blue thread locks on all these. So hand tight them. So just put these all in, like a so. And then ideally what you want to do is tighten them up in a crisscross pattern. Uh, that will just mean that the sprocket is um, not going to be tightened in um, one spot only and then the rest. Uh, by the way, these um, torque specs are all online if you just search them up or just get a massive um, book all about your bike. I forget what the brand is. I'll um, put a picture up on the screen of the book that I've got. So yeah, that's, those are all now, you know, on there. So now you just want to snug them all up. So I just snug them up now. Um, as well guys make sure the socket is all the way on the bolt make sure it isn't halfway um, because you might you might strip out the um, the actual head of the uh, nut and you don't really want to do that um, if you do do it get yourself some fat uh, mole grips mole grips these are mini ones but mole grips are a bit like this and what you can do is um, clamp the bolt really really tight and hit it with a hammer and then replace the nut with a new nut uh, if you're not comfortable on doing that, just take it to a mechanic and they will happily sort you out. Cool, so that's all good, that's all done. Um, I did forget to do one thing, I forgot to clean the axle. So let me quickly do that. So once you've um, got those O-rings in on both sides, then you need to just put the um, side clip back on the way you took it off. So let me put it on and I'll show you what it looks like. So yeah, once you've um, got your uh, chain on and the quick link, um, basically get the chain 
to the right amount of tension uh, and put this lovely cover back on. Um, and yeah, make sure the bolts are all nice and tight. Make sure your rear wheel axle is at 59 newton meters uh, and make sure the spacing between here and here is the same on both sides so your wheel is nice and straight and um yeah that's how you change your chain and sprockets guys uh i hope this video helps you out um and yeah hopefully i'll be passing my test and uh, selling this bike soon um so that's the whole reason why i thought putting a new chain and sprocket on it as well all right guys see you guys in a bit uh and have a good one it's currently raining outside as well so i can't go out and ride my bike but anyway see ya Peace.